Hey, this is editing JC popping in before the beginning of this episode. If you saw our last one, you will know that we started going through all of the different talks from Sirs X. You can watch part one. It was posted last week. This is part two, where we finished discussing all of the talks in their entirety, just with quick takeaways. And then we're planning on doing a series where we talk about the different uh, talks in more specificity as category. So we'll do like a remediation episode and a protocol episode, et cetera, et cetera. But quick disclaimer before we jump into this episode, uh, Barbara and I are SIRS patients. We've read the textbooks. We have a community of people who are experiencing SIRS. We went to SIRS X, so we know a lot about SIRS, but we're not medical professionals. So nothing that we should we say should be taken as medical advice. Anyways, that's the quick intro to this video. I hope you enjoy it. I'm going to let past JC and Barbara take it away. The next talk was Even Holy Water Supports Mold, and this was by Michael Schrantz and Bill Weber. They are remediators, and basically they were called into a nunnery in order to help them. One of the nuns had SIRS, was diagnosed with SIRS, so they needed to kind of assess the building for remediation. And it was hysterical because the the head nun, what are they called? Um, The mother? head mother oh man can you tell we are not catholic um <laughs> the the a head nun she would she was watching them while they were doing this and so she's in the background of some of the photos like they'll be taking a picture of a wall with like water damage and you could just see this nun she's <laughs> just so background. angry she's so mad <laughs> she did look angry the whole time yeah. um my takeaway from this talk was that mold inspection is a multi-system, multi-symptom problem, meaning we talk about SIRS being multi-system, multi-symptom, but what they really proved with this building was like there were multiple problems with it that were causing multiple effects. And it was really cool to kind of like go through the investigation with them, especially because they did this talk in two parts. I feel like I have a much better appreciation for what remediators go through now. Yeah, that was fantastic. It was one of my favorite talks, I have to say. And just if you do have any knowledge of your own buildings that you work in, probably work in because this is like it's a commercial building, uh, not residential, Um, but it was built in phases and at the phase points where one building was built and they decided to add on like years later, that's where a lot of problems happened because the architects did not, you just uh, the, just su- such preventable problems occurred. And it was really heartbreaking to see all of that. And the other preventable problem that caused a lot of the damage was actually just poor maintenance, just people not taking care of buildings the way they should. So educating yourself on proper maintenance of the home that you live in or making sure the maintenance team where you work knows what they're doing as well as you can figure that out um, or help with that uh, is seems to be really crucial. That was my big takeaway for sure. The next talk was erythromyalgia and per- peripheral hypoperfusion, hypoperfusion. And this was by Dr. Lysander Jim. Um, the takeaway I had from this was that erythromyalgia Malalgia, I'm sure I'm saying this wrong, response to SIRS treatment. So it's this really specific condition that people get where um, it's it's like a swelling and pain of their hands or their ears or their feet, and it gets better with elevation. And it was just like this super highly specific case study of this specific condition responding well to SIRS treatment. So it's interesting to see, you know, the ALS and Parkinson's and dementia and even this kind of connecting dots back to SIRS. Yeah. It's always good when we can identify like a a mainstream illness, one that conventional doctors recognize and then can point the root cause back to SIRS. The next talk was Stop Coronary Disease, Live Longer, Live Better. And this was by Bill Blunt, Dr. Bl- Bill Blanchett. How many times can I say that wrong? My big takeaway from this was that cardiac events can be predicted via a CAC. And there are easy steps to stabilize. And once you're stabilized, you have, so even if you have a CAC score and you can't reverse it, if you can stabilize it, it means you have a less than 0.5% chance of having a cardiac event annually. So that's regardless of what your score is. So I thought that was really cool that I know a lot of people are like, oh gosh, I'm too far gone. You're not too far gone. Just stabilize it and you're good to go. Yes. And that it's a coronary artery calcium score. Um, please, if you are 40 years old or older as a man or 50 and older as a woman, 
please ask your doctor about getting the scan. And if they won't do it for you, there are lots of clinics and you can pay a hundred bucks or 200 bucks to get the scan. It's very worth it. It is probably the only test that really will tell you your risk for a heart attack. And it's one of the number one, if not the number one killer in this country anyway. So it's really important that people get that test done and uh, monitor it over the rest of their lives. The next talk was dust mites. So un uncontroversial. They're mostly forgotten. And this was by Carl Grimes. And he, this was another adorable older man. And he was just so, so passionate about dust mites. It was so cute. Um, there were some horrifying facts in this talk. Um, basically, dust mites are really gross and likely cause a lot of asthma symptoms. But the good news is Actino's cleaning also covers dust mites. So it's a my takeaway was dust mites are gross and dehumidifiers in a HEPA vacuum, washing your bedding and your body frequently. Um, oh, and then the biggest takeaway was he said, don't make your bed, which justifies a lot of things for me because I hate making my bed. But if you don't make your bed, it allows the moisture to evaporate and then you don't get dust mites. Yeah. Dust mites are only active in the dark and when humidity is above 50%. So I'm like, oh, I live in Vegas. I don't have to worry about it. And then, oh, contraire, when you're in your bed, pretty sure humidity goes up, which is really gross to think about um, because then the dust mites start moving and having sex and eating and pooping and all of this stuff on you, um, which is really gross. So all the more reason, change those sheets, vacuum that bed, wash yourself. <laughs> Please wash yourself, people. Please wash yourself. <laughs> if you if you take one thing away from the podcast today, it's <laughs> please wash yourself. <laughs> the next talk was cyanobacterial toxins as a risk factor for neurodegeneration. And this was by Dr. Elijah Stommel. He had some really interesting connections for ALS patients where he would have his students map where these ALS patients lived, and he found they were like clustered around where there were algae blooms. So my biggest takeaway from this was algae is scary. Yeah. Uh, mine was ALS equals algae blooms. Yeah. I mean, that's, I, that's so specific. It was crazy how he would he would be working with one family that lived on a lake and like the husband, the wife and the caretaker of the grounds all got it, you know, or, or whatever. Like he, it just, it, yeah, it, it was so to me, it's like so obvious like that, that, that is the problem. And it's just crazy that more people may, might not know about it. Yeah. So it's cool that Sir's X are bringing in like these kind of like adjacent Sir's topic. Uh, yeah. practitioners so that there can be more awareness and we can start studying these things right the next talk was coagulation sirs and genie and this was done by dr james ryan and this is the the man who invented the genie so if you're not familiar with the genie it's a genetic test you can get you typically get it at the start of your surge treatment and it'll show you two things. One, the biotoxins that you might be sensitive to. So it can show if you're spiking for like mycotoxins or actinos. The other thing it can show you is the errant genes that uh, SIRS has turned on. So basically the inflammation from SIRS puts so much pressure on your transcriptome that it can start triggering things like autoimmune conditions. And the genie shows this. So I'm I nerd out about this. I think it's an amazing tool. I wish I had gotten it at the start of my SIRS treatment. But my takeaway here was that the genie shows the details, but the neuroquant shows the bigger picture. So it showed the neuroquant is the MRI brain scan where you can see the neuroinflammation. So that's where you see kind of like the effects of what is happening in the genie. So I thought that was so fascinating. Yeah, definitely. You summarized that beautifully. Moving into day number three, this was Sunday. Um, by this day, we were kind of sunsetting. We, <laughs> but we were at this point struggling. This was the last day of SIRS X. Uh, I did take notes. Um, so the mm, one talk I didn't take notes for was the foundations training. That was actually the first talk on uh, Saturday. And that was by Jesse Salas. And then the oh, foundations yes. training is actually by Dr. Eric Goodman. And this is kind of a funny story. 
I've been doing foundations training for a little while now. I had a friend who was like, oh, you have pain here and here. Watch these videos um, and it'll it'll walk you through a protocol so you can get rid of the pain. But the the videos were in Telugu because my friend is Indian. And then when I we when we were there and I posted in my stories that we were doing this like foundations training talk, my friend was like, I know him. And he sent me a video of the guy like wishing him happy new year's. Like he knows him personally. And and then I <laughs> like connected the dots that I've been doing this training. I just found it through like this side door <laughs> where I didn't know I was doing this thing. That's actually really helpful for people who have like joint or mobility or um, postural issues from SIRS. So that was really cool. Yeah, totally random. And uh, I like it when those moments happen because it's almost like the universe is telling you, yep, you're in the right spot. So start of day three, uh, the first talk was understanding immune response genetics. And this was by Dr. Scott McMahon. And so he was doing a deep dive into HLA. My takeaway from this was that it's not an infection or an allergy. It's more like an autoimmune disease or like you have an infection all the time forever. So essentially your body is just res- constantly creating this inflammation. It's it's less like the biotoxin is an infection and more like you have an autoimmune condition where your body is attacking itself with this inflammation. Yep. It's... um. As Dr. D puts it, a disease of vehement, uncontrolled immunoreactivity. It's not necessarily the biotoxins themselves that are directly causing. Uh, I mean, they are causing the issues, but they're not because it's just your body going nuts uh, on itself. So, yeah, great talk. The next talk was historical versus modern dust. And this was by Greg Weatherman. Uh my takeaway from this talk was that an IEP needs, and an IEP is an indoor environment professional, aka a remediator. Um, they need to be a project manager of the whole remediation. Otherwise, things can be missed or mishandled. Yes. And my main takeaway is that you can cut open plastic trash bags and either tape them to the wall or put them on the ground or put them on some other horizontal surface to collect new dust. That's uh, just a little trick that I guess a lot of remediators use. Um, And that was discussed further in the panel discussion at the end of the day as well. The next talk was osteopathy as an adjunct therapy for those with SIRS. And this was by Dr. April Vakulik. And I loved this talk. She shared a lot of before and afters. So I wasn't familiar with osteopathy before this, but it's actually like hands-on doctoring where they do like physical manipulation of you. And she would show these before and afters. And my takeaway was um, the body wants to heal. It's, we say this a lot, the body wants to heal. It's all about supporting it in the way it needs to be supported and then getting out of your own way. But then for the before and after photos, I was like, um, people are prettier. They were. They were. In every case, they were like more symmetrical and, and prettier. It was weird. Yeah, like it, they they didn't have like inflammation in their face. They were more symmetrical. If they had like any misalignment, it was aligned for people who had like hunchback, they, their posture improved. Like it just made people prettier. Like how do I sign up for this? Yeah, no, it was great. And if for anyone who's, so, so when you see like your doctor can either be an MD or a DO, a, a DO is doctor of osteopathic medicine. That's what uh, April is. And she, I guess it's more uh, prevalent in Europe. Um, she also mentioned that there are vets that do it. And that is very true. And I got very excited about this whole thing because one of my dogs has some joint pain that I would love to get addressed. But unfortunately, uh, any resources that I found on it were uk based or whatever you know just somewhere not in the united states so if you are outside of the united states that is one thing that you guys have more of than than we do here are uh, doctors of osteopathy and and you probably have more people familiar with that practice Uh, in fact she referenced uh quite a few members of the monarchy uh uh, that utilize uh this practice just as general as their general health so i thought that was funny 
That was an amazing talk. And the next talk was Holy Water Part 2. So again, this was Mike Schrantz and Bill Weber. And the takeaway I had from this one is that it's very, very rarely ever one thing. Bad maintenance and bad building practices are pervasive and systemic. So if you have an issue in one place, it's very likely, you know, where they cut corners in one area, how likely is it they didn't cut corners in another area? The next talk was House Hunting with SIRS, and this was by Jennifer Schrantz, and that last name might sound familiar. She is, in fact, married to Mike Schrantz, and this talk was incredible. She's a realtor. She talked all about the buying process and how she helps her uh, clients with SIRS buy houses, and like, if I could buy a house with her, I 100% would. My takeaway from this is that we aren't looking for perfect. We are looking for peace of mind, and that was a direct quote from her. And it was just saying, like, you're not going to find a place that doesn't need remediation. You're you're not necessarily going to find a place that, like, checks all of the boxes. But you will find a place that checks most of your boxes. And then it's just a matter of figuring out what you need to do after that. What you're looking for is peace of mind, a place where you can feel safe and feel welcome and feel like it's home. Yeah, she... She really broke down a wonderful plan for how to house hunt as a person with SIRS, what to look for, what tests to make sure you get within the window of time that you are able to to do tests and still back out of your contract without losing your earnest money, which I thought was, um, I mean, it's things that you can logically figure out, I suppose, um, but it was really nice to see it laid out in a plan. Um, and they, the Schrantzes live in Tucson. So if you're anywhere in that vicinity, uh, you can definitely utilize her services. But the wonderful thing she also added is that she does have her own reference list of uh, real estate agents who are SIRS aware across the country. So she always wants to know if she, if there is a realtor you, you've you used. Um, so so definitely reach out to her and let her know uh, if, if you were pleased with your realtor's ability to handle SIRS. Um, but otherwise, if you're looking for references and you don't live in Tucson, you can still reach out to her for that. The next talk was benzo-induced neurologic dysfunction, and this was by um, Christy Huff. I wasn't super familiar. Like I knew benzo withdrawal was a thing, but I didn't know like what a thing it was. This one kind of broke my heart a little bit. Um, My takeaway here is that bind, which is benzo induced neurologic dysfunction is scary. Like it's, it's scary that practitioners put people on this medication. And apparently, I, I mean, I would hope not knowing that they could have all of these side effects as they try and what, like get off of this medication. It's horrifying to me that this can happen. Yeah, the fact that it's prescribed mostly for anxiety and the fact that in some cases it can actually make your anxiety worse over time, over over prolonged use. Uh, that's insane. Um, if anyone's familiar with Jordan Peterson, this is basically what happened to him and you know, he nearly died from it. Like it's a it's a really horrific physical, it's a physical addiction, which is different than like that, that your, your usual like drug user addiction where you're just craving it um, or using it to cope. It, it actually, as you use benzos over time, your body becomes physically, it needs it. And, and to drop it cold turkey can actually cause horrific side effects, including death. Um, and so her whole program actually helps you again, like on a protocol, very, very, very carefully and slowly taper off of them. Um, And, and then when you do taper off, you will hopefully see a a resolution to most of these really awful symptoms. Um, But again, going back to support groups, um, I mean, that really, she really hammered home how important the community was in these situations, having somebody to help you through it, because it, I mean, it is basically an addiction. So it's it's similar in, in a lot of ways. You do need that support to help you get through it. Yeah, 100%. And that 100%. concludes all of the talks that we went through. Um, the only other thing I wanted to mention was the vendors we saw there. Some names you might know, Defense Soap and Virobionics. Uh, there were P- PD Labs, which I know a lot of people get their CSM from, Omaprem, which is the uh, SPM that we 
we take as fish oil supplements. So it was cool to see them represented there mm-hmm. as well. Air Oasis, there are yeah. filters. Pretty um, much then, anyone who gets anyone's name who gets thrown around as a recommendation to purchase from uh when you have SIRS was there. And that was that was cool to see. Sirewall was there as well, uh, which was great. They're they're like based in Australia, I think, or at least the guy that one of the main guys is, and he was there. So that was cool. Yeah, it was really cool to see everyone like turn out. And then I was fangirling a little bit because it's like all the the SIRS rock stars are there, you know, like Dr. Uchi Shoemaker uh, video called in, but, you know, Dr. Dorninger and Dr. Scott McMahon and, um, you know, now I have my favorites, Ming Dooley and John Banta and Carl Grimes. Um, But it was just really cool to see these people who have done so much work in the SERS field and the awareness of SERS and treating SERS patients for so long. Dr. Jimmy Ryan, the the inventor of the genie, like, come on, we were spoiled. And it was also worth mentioning on the very first night that we were there, they did give out awards and those are usually like, oh, whatever, some awards, everyone's congratulating each other on whatever things. Like when you go to a conference, you're like, what are these going to be? The Dundies. Um, But they did give, uh, Dr. D gave the award to Judy. I forget if it was called, I think it was the Angel Award, right? No, it was something different. Yeah, it was something different. I didn't write it down. Yeah, I didn't either. But the point is he... He actually broke down when he said that Judy has done more for SIRS in one year than Dr. D feels that he has done in 10. And it's so true. She brought it to the carnivore space. And of course, the carnivore space is full of such sick people. Why? Because who else would be drawn to such an extreme diet? Uh, And so um, Judy was the perfect um just uh, amplifier of the SIRS message to a community that desperately needed it. And that was really cool to see her recognized amongst everyone else there in the community for what she's done. I'm so glad I was there to experience that as well. And I'm I'm glad they led with that on the first night as well. Yeah. As we mentioned, we're going to do recap episodes of more specifics. The next one I think we're planning to do is remediation. So keep an eye out for that. And in the meantime, if you're looking for more resources and support on your SERS journey, you can join us over at thesersgroup.com. See you there.